Great. Thanks so much, Bert. Um, so uh, good afternoon, everybody. Thank you so much for, uh, for entering your, your details into the chat. That's wonderful. Um, it's great to see that we have um, everybody's kind of coming from everywhere today. So that's wonderful. Um, welcome to our experimenter webinar. Um, we are actually taking a different approach with, uh, with these webinars this week. Um, so we've, we had one yesterday for Teacher for Learning. Uh, we have one today, obviously, for Experimenter, and we have one tomorrow for the Curator module. And what we're doing in these sessions is a little bit different. Um, we're going to actually um, do stuff. You're not just going to sit here and listen to us talk all day. <laughs> so uh, we we can uh, we can go on here, Bert, and yeah, sure. um, and keep going. So um, my name is Alyssa Bigelow. Uh, I'm an instructional design technologist, and uh, currently I am working as a program facilitator for the Ontario Extend program. Uh, we also have Charlotte Derujo. Uh, she is an instructor and course coordinator. Um, she's not here today in this session, but she does facilitate some of our evening sessions and uh, Saturdays as well. Uh, so we'll, we'll explain that a little bit more there, but uh, that's Charlotte's picture in case you decide to join us at other sessions. Yeah, my name is Bert Slusser and I'm also an instructional designer. I also do a lot of faculty development work at the uh, at Georgian College and have been invested in a lot of uh, transitioning uh you know it's a high flex hybrid uh anything digital tech uh, ed tech software a lot of that's uh, that those kind of elements as we as we've uh, gone through a, a mega shift um like like most of us have uh so in terms of uh welcoming um introduce yourself in the chat we've already kind of uh, done that let us know who you are and where you're from i'm going to pop open the chat because i haven't taken a look at it yet and just to take a look and see where everyone is from so that's great. Welcome, Patricia, um, and and uh, Trisha, and Susan. Oh, the, yeah. There is definitely a wide scope of of people and um, geographical uh, differences, which is amazing. Jenny, welcome. Ivan, welcome. And Naomi. Welcome as well. I'm just kind of making sure I, I get to know any, everyone. So as we go through this, thanks for, for putting the, that information in the chat. Um, you know, we'll hopefully we'll get to, you know, we can break the ice as we go. We don't have a ton of time. Um, so we're going to dive right into these. And like Alyssa said, there's going to be a few more hands-on moments. And, uh, you know, some of it may be repeat. You might say, oh, I already do this, and some of it might be new. So, and we can always shift gears too if, if, if it feels like you, you want something else or you want to ask a few other questions of, of how we uh, kind of run our program at Ontario Extend. Um, some quick housekeeping, uh, you know, please keep your, your microphones muted if you're, if you're not speaking. Uh, use the chat or you can unmute when you want to ask a question. Uh, the closed captioning button is there to uh, enabling uh, enable uh, live captions, and then uh, refer the chat window. Alyssa is going to post in some instructions for French translation and uh, PowerPoint presentation, and then, as Alyssa already mentioned, the session will be recorded. I'm taking a quick drink to try and clear my throat. So first, I would just like to start with a, a, a land acknowledgement and begin by honoring and acknowledging the offices of eCampus Ontario. Uh, they're located on the traditional territory of many nations, including the Mississaugas of the Credit, Anishinaabe, the Chippewa, the Haudenosaunee, and the Wendat peoples. I recognize and I'm grateful for the legacy of all past, present, and future generations of the first peoples of this land. And I invite you in this call today to advance your, uh, your own personal journey toward truth and reconciliation and how, and ask, you know, how we can move from acknowledgement to action. And part of our journey has been to learn more about the nine indigenous institutes in Ontario, which are um, indigenous governed and operated institutions that provide a culturally 
responsive learning environment for students and their families. So please, you know, use the links I've uh, Alyssa's putting into the chat to learn more about the work of these institutes across Ontario. And we'll go to the next slide. Okay, um, so we are going to start with a little bit of talking for you, um, just to give you a little bit of background. Um, we're not, uh, just to make sure everybody's familiar with the program. Um, so this is, we are uh, working on one of six um, professional learning modules today. Um, we're going to take a look at the experimenter module and a couple of quick activities that we can complete in, um, in our time together today. Um, Ontario Extend is, oh, let me just uh, get the, the link here. My link is not launching here. Um, Oh, I can't paste into the chat for some reason. Huh. Um, let me just see, copy the link. Paste. Oh, there we go. Okay, I apologize. Um, so Ontario Extend is uh, a professional learning program uh, that was launched in August of 2017. So it has been around for a little while and it's gone through some iterations um, as times have changed. Um, the content is available at the link that I put in the chat. Um, it's available 24-7, um, and you can access all of the content from each of the modules um, through that link. Um, it also provides some information about the sessions that we're going to be running this fall based around uh, the various modules. Um, so, as I mentioned, um, you're, we'll be working and looking at one of six modules uh, today. Um, each of the modules takes about four to six hours to complete. Uh, there's some content in there to help you um, along the way with whichever one you're, you're venturing on. Uh, and there are some tasks that uh, you can complete. And when you complete those tasks, uh, there are links to a uh, repository called the Activity Bank uh, that you can submit your answers to or your reflections to. Um, and then uh, once, you're com once you've completed the module, you can apply for a digital badge um, that will um, follow you wherever you'd like to go. Um, so each module um, has a digital badge associated with it. And when you collect uh, all six digital badges or earn the digital badges, because you are working for them, um, you will receive an empowered educator micro-credential. Um, so these are wonderful um, artifacts to have uh, on hand and they can really help. Uh, you can share them out through LinkedIn or Twitter or other social networks. Um, and you can actually even attach them to your resumes. Um, so it's a really, they're really great digital artifacts to have. Um, the modules themselves are self-directed, self-paced, and they are, are collaborative. Um, so you can choose how you complete the modules. Um, when you complete the modules online, um, it is asynchronous, so you can work away on your own, or you can join in some of the facilitated sessions that we are offering uh, somewhat like this one. The content is all Creative Commons uh, openly licensed. So uh, if, you're, if you're wanting to um, use this program at your institution if you're from one of uh, one of our centers of teaching and learning um, it is open for you to use at your institution uh, and modify as you would like um, and the program is available in both english and french um, so that is also very great for our french um, our french colleagues um, and as you'll notice, even from our chat today, um, we have a lot of participant diversity. So we have people from all over the province in various different roles. Um, so we have some faculty join us, we have educational developers join us, we have consultants joining us, um, uh, part-time, full-time, you name it. Uh, we've got a lot of folks from higher education that, that do participate in the program. So it's really great, um, especially for these facilitated sessions to get different viewpoints and to, to hear stories about, you know, how things work in, in your realm of, of um, reality. So it's, it's really nice to, to have that diversity as we go through these. So like I mentioned, uh, there's six badges. Uh, I'm not going to 
read in depth in all of these ones, but uh, we have the teacher for learning module. And uh, this one has foundational, um, this one deals with foundational teaching and learning um, with technology skills. So uh, this one is always a great place to start um, if you're new to the program. Uh, that's not to say you can't start at the experimenter if, if you are new and you're joining us today. Um, it's totally okay. You can do them in whatever order you'd like. Um, so we have teacher for learning, which, which deals with the foundational uh, skills and knowledge. Uh, there is the curator, which um, examines open educational resources, uh, and we're hosting uh, a webinar similar to this tomorrow for the curator. Um, the technologist module um, has you look at different learner challenges that you've encountered and select appropriate technologies that can help solve that learner challenge. Um, so that one's a really great one to go through. Uh, the collaborator module focuses on um, expanding your um, personal learning networks. Um, so we look at you know, different ways you can connect with people. Um, it examines all of that kind of stuff. So it's, it's a really nice module to go through, especially in an environment like this, where we have people from, from different, uh, different roles. Um, the experimenter module, which you are here for today, um, this is this is the one we we kind of term the fun one because it's uh, we get to dip into a little bit of uh, technology experimentation. So we're going to have you look at different tools um, and uh, go through a couple of activities that will um, help you through that piece. And we also have the scholar module, which focuses on the scholarship of teaching and learning and some research in that area. Um, and when you collect all six, you get that Empowered Educator badge that's in the middle there. Awesome. Thanks, Alyssa. No problem. Uh, so today the goal is to give you some, some like a chance to basically have a, a snippet of, of what the experimenter module would be like. And so like Alyssa mentioned at the very beginning, we, um, you know, we ourselves are trying to experiment in just a different format in terms of a regular uh, webinar and we're experimenting with a strategy strategy in which we're going to try and get you to do a, a few more hands-on activities and maybe do some uh, collaboration or sharing of, of those activities if there's time. Um, and that's essentially the, the spirit of, of Experimenter is not just a new technology, but, but just being willing to experiment. I think, um, you know, when, when we have, when Alyssa and I have run sessions uh, in the past, you know, there is a sense of, you know, what people get uh, um, a barrier to, to experimentation has been uh, a time, you know, slot and just giving yourself the time and the confidence to, uh, to, to not succeed sometimes and, and to, to have things go wrong and, and be okay with that. And so I think that's part of the, the outcome in this is that, uh, you know, not, not to, to fail, but to, to be okay with, with trial and error and experimenting and in order to, to better support, you know, your, your pedagogy as well as a, a st student learning. Um, so reflect, you know, that's a key piece. Uh, I know if anyone's been teaching for a little while, you're, you're constantly reflecting on new ways to design learning experiences, and we're going to do the same here. Uh, we're embracing experimentation um, in your instructional strategies. So yeah, you can, you can open up a little bit and say, what else can I try? What else can I um, move towards. And then today's focus is on a couple of tech technology tools. And uh, some you may know, some you may not. And uh, we're going to try and look at them in a slightly different uh, uh, through a, a conceptual lens. The lunch and learn webinar activities on the left, you're going to see the ones that we're going to you know, just talk about today and, and maybe experiment with here is the survey and polls. Uh, uh, Giphy, if you've never used that, it should, it's a bit of fun. And then if there's time, we'll, we'll cover infographics as well. On the right-hand side, if you were to, you know, go through the Ontario Extend process and, and complete the entire badge, then what you would do is you would um, complete not all of these, but you would pick a good number of them um, that you would have to do for this activity. I believe it's three off the list. Um, yeah. plus a reflection. 
and um, and that's you would submit three different of these activities. And so here we're just kind of giving you the technology that they use within that the, in within the activity. Um, they give you more information on, on our website about you know the specifics of the task. Uh, so today we just pick three uh, to give you a, a you know an example of what you might have to do. So this one here is surveys and polls. This is activity number one. Um, you know, think about any of the times where you've maybe wanted to survey uh, your audience, uh, whether it be face to face or online. And uh, we're looking at these response tools that are powerful, uh, like we have it here in this first uh, point for capturing opinions and understanding your students or your colleagues. Um, and I say your colleagues because sometimes you know you need to send out information or collect data that you know is uh, interdepartmental. You know where you're trying to work or collaborate with other peers um, that are in your department or outside of your department. And so sometimes surveying and, and polling is is great for that. So the activity you know is specific to surveys and polls. Explore an online survey tool. Um, An experiment by creating, connecting a five question survey of your peers about ways to use technology enabled activities. You know, what ways um, uh, could they use technology enabled activities? And so you're going to create some kind of a survey. And in this case, you know what, what I might do is I might kind of flex the, the requirements. This is sort of the specific requirement that they would want for, for the Ontario Extend badge. So if you do follow it specifically, then you can use this as a submission for part of earning the badge. If you want to kind of flex it a little bit and, and change it, or you just want to get to know some of the programs um, that we're talking about, then you can do that too and, and not worry about submitting for the badge right away. Um, so whether it's Google, like Google Forms, uh, if you've used Stockard before, it's another good one. Uh, poll everywhere, and then there's more uh, tools in this in the Ontario Extend Toolkit. Um, what I'm I'm going to switch gears here a little bit, and um, maybe what I'll do is I'll uh, I'm going to go to the next slide. Um, actually, no, I'll stay on this slide. We're going to go back one. Um, my cursor doesn't always want to work properly here, so I apologize for the delay here. So I'm going to go back one slide, and this would be part of the activity that you would see online if you were looking at these. Um, what I might do here is I'm going to do two things at once. I'm going to dem I'm going to ask you a question, but I'm also going to demonstrate how to use a a, a polling. And um, here, um, hopefully, Alyssa, you can still see my screen, okay? Um. I am actually, I or maybe think not. I am. Uh, yeah, I've, I've, I pressed escape. So I mean, I'm kind of in the, okay. the, the general, um, uh, just open PowerPoint. So it looks a little, uh, uh, you know, rough here. Um, one of the cool pieces of, of pulling software, and if you've already used this, great. If you haven't, then you can maybe learn something new. But uh, Pull Everywhere is a great software polling tool. And Poll Everywhere can actually be downloaded for free and embedded into your PowerPoint. So it's really simple to use. And once I've downloaded it, I'm not going to go through like the full instructions. But what I can do is once I have it in my um, system, I can click on the Poll Everywhere and I can create a question. And this activity uh, gets um, embedded, essentially. Let me drag it over to my screen here. I'm going to click on new activity. And what I'll do is I'm just going to pick a, a multiple choice question to, uh, to edit. And you need to click edit in order to access the question. And I'll say, how have you used um, polling software? Uh, if so, which one? And so for this, we'll put in. Um, you know, Google, uh, Google Forms, and I put all my uh, options in, Poll AV, it's Poll Everywhere, uh, Microsoft Forms is another one, or maybe you've used a bit more of a, a like Socrative, which is a slightly different tool, or I'm going to add an option here and say uh, other. 
And once I have that in there, I click save and it puts that question. I'm going to say insert slide into my poll. I'm just going to use the default one. I know I'm kind of going through this really quick. I hit ins insert. I'm going to say, OK, I'm going to click the Xbox. And now I have a, a poll in my in my uh, slideshow. And I'm going to go uh, uh, from current slide. I'm going to present. And I'm going to make sure this is unlocked. And I could see people's responses. And if you can respond to this, that would be great. In order to respond, you would, you would uh, uh, I'm going to post this link in our chat so everybody can reach it. Let me, let me, let me do that again here. I think it's sent just to Rich, I believe. Make sure I spelled everything correctly. So I just put a link in there. You might have to copy and paste that link into your URL. It may not just uh, direct you specifically to that. It's going to ask you for a username, but you can skip that. You don't need to put your name in uh, Not so that it's not open to everybody. So this is a good example where you know it's not going to work. So what I'm going to ask you to do is then put your answers into the chat. And or or you can unmute and let's just have a quick uh, you know dialogue about uh, polling software that you have used. Okay, Naomi uses MS Forms. Awesome. Zoom. Okay, soccer. Soccer. If you haven't used Trisha, okay. So it looks like you know a fair amount of you have have used um, has has any have most of you used Poll Everywhere? That would be my next question. Or is Poll Everywhere new? Jenny has perfect. Okay, Susan and Patricia say it's new. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Perfect. So there's there's like a great. You know, when you look at the chat, you can see different people have different preferences. And that's where you get into experimentation. So I love MS Forms. MS Forms is, is so clean. It's simple to use. Uh, uh, Naomi brought up a, a great point. The QR code is so easy. Everybody usually has their phones on them. They can just uh, um, uh, kind of scan it and, it and it pops up for them on their phone. It's a very clean program. Uh, the advantage of Poll Everywhere is... Uh, you know, depending on your institution, sometimes Poll Everywhere can interact direct, interacts directly integrated with your uh, PowerPoint. Whereas MS Forms, it can, but I think you have to have it at a personal level. Sometimes it's harder at, at the institution if you're using uh, like an institutional um, uh, interface, uh, uh, PowerPoint, et cetera, then it's harder to, to get the forms to integrate with, um, with, with PowerPoint. So what I would like to give you the opportunity is take you know a few minutes to experiment with uh with a poll polling software that you haven't accessed even if you go and check out their website and just see what what it's about or how they're using it um realistically this, these this webinar is meant to give you a bit of time to kind of build one of these activities so what i'll do is i'm going to go back a slide so i can rest on those activities if it will let me the activity um, instruction um great point jenny one of the issues our faculty face is that students get fatigued with all different platforms being used by different instructors yes uh you want to respond to your own question um that sorry if that sounds rude or if i'm putting you on the spot but you know what have you found that's worked because i mean i have my own thought on that or my own opinion on that and uh, I've, I'm right there with you. I agree. Um, yeah. So, so um, 
let me say like spring of 2020 as the semester came to an abrupt close and we all went remote I think it was most acute because uh professors all turned to whatever they were familiar with or could quickly become familiar with um, having gone through what, 18 months now of remote teaching and people like using different platforms, I'd say things have started to calm down. We've developed like norms within our faculty, uh, you know, some preferred software, but we have not had any sort of um, mandate from the top. All we've had is sort of, and I speak as an administrator, I am part of the staff who try to help faculty find their way. Um, we haven't managed to get buy-in on telling people to only use specific platforms. What, what has instead emerged is more of an organic agreement as to which were the preferred platforms. So we still have a few outliers, let's say. So this is an interesting time, I think, as, it, as we mature into the idea of more technology and teaching, um, where the outliers will presumably become fewer as um, you know, a consensus builds, we might start to have more resources inside the faculty that say, you know, this is what we're going to use, use this. I think um, that's, a, yeah, sorry, keep going, yeah. I was only going to finish by saying, you know, back to you. So yes, you said yeah. your opinion. It, well, yeah, you know, you great. You brought up a great point. Like these are these are real issues, right? That that students struggle with. Um, uh, two two things. Like I love the word that you used is is we mature into it. Like that's one thing I really liked it. But you, what you just said and that um, that I it doesn't you you know when you try and force it to happen, um, the integration or the experimentation, even even if you're doing it for the right reasons, uh, it still just may not work for your students. Uh, anecdotally, I remember trying to do, uh, I, I thought I was, you know, being a, a great teacher and I, th I, I hosted one specific class. I remember in a summer course I was teaching uh, a couple of years ago and I remember thinking, oh, well, I, I'm going to introduce some new, you know, technology ed tech that they might like. And there's three different programs they could choose, you know, which one they wanted to sort of mess around with. And it was their the students were very vocal and that it, it didn't work for all of them. Uh, you know, even just you trying to get in, uh, I believe it was your, your comment that you weren't able to get into the, the poll and even simple things like that, they, they really defeat a student. So in terms of like, and I remember that moment thinking, oh, right, like the technology is not the emphasis here. Um, you know, in certain classes where they have to have the technology in order, you know, computer programming, or if they're using, uh, you know, CAD software or something to that effect, then for sure, that makes sense. But, um, you know, when I look at surveys and polls, if you're already using one that works for you, then, hey, just, just I always think, like, stick with it. I'm a big believer in in you know picking a piece of technology that's going to work with your students that's going to be familiar accessible um, reusable uh, just something that they can um, be comfortable with and and it's uh, so that you're not uh, creating a you know inequity within your within your your, your class dynamic um, so i think that's a great great point um, I think there's some mileage in asking your colleagues who are also teaching in you know in allied disciplines in the faculty you know what are they having success with because it's quite possible that those students are in the same classes you know so you can try to align your uh, skills and training to catch up if they're using a different platform 100 percent, absolutely it's a great great point um you know i i know me or uh, naomi my apologies uh, for example, asked, uh, you know, is poll everywhere? Is it required to download an, an account to, to download the PowerPoint app? And uh, you do have to um, uh, create an account and then you would download uh, the PowerPoint app uh, for it. And the reason why I brought up poll everywhere is, you know, it's, it's not always the easiest program to use as, as faculty, I'll be honest. Uh, my preference would still be forums because it's, it's so much cleaner. However, uh, Pull Everywhere integrates really well with, with, uh, with PowerPoint. And so that would be the biggest difference. I found that you know if I'm trying to integrate some sort of quick activity that's simple, that's streamlined into my PowerPoint, then that, that is one of the reasons why I would use uh, a Pull Everywhere. Um, Socrative is, is pretty neat for, for you know, things like ex exit tickets and and uh, just general questioning where you want sort of these, these quick responses back. 
not quick, but like just accessible, um, then it's also a similar tool that does uh, something um, very much the same as, as these other uh, tools. Um, yeah, okay, Susan. So Susan, I'll be honest, I see your comment there about uh, Zoom and that it's seamless. Um, full disclosure, I don't use Zoom a lot. Um, I use Zoom for, for some for the eCampus work that I do, but um, my institution is on a different platform. So that would be something, you know, that I'll experiment with and see how it goes. Um, but but that's a that's a great uh, point. So maybe I'll get a consensus here. Uh, we probably have spent maybe enough time on um, on uh, on talking about polls and surveys. And I think we're going to go to the next activity if that's okay with everybody else. Maybe get it like a, a thumbs up from 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 someone in the group. <laughs> Sounds good. Okay, good stuff. <laughs> okay, thank you. So there's the poll. Didn't work. That's fine. What I would do is I would just go into my settings and change it so it allows anyone to participate. That would be a simple fix. Um, in this, for the sake of the webinar, I'm just going to keep moving forward. Um, but a great example of of when sometimes you have to, you know, fall onto to the plan B. Okay, so next question. Maybe I'll get people to uh, respond in the chat. Um, and I, you'll obviously for, have to forgive me. I'll, I'm going to work on my Zoom uh, polling skills uh, probably after this session. How many of you ever used uh, GIFs uh, or made a GIF uh, in, your, um, in your class to convey a concept? Jenny? Okay, Susan's no. Okay. Yeah. So this was different. You know, this was different for me. I had to do a bit of a flip in my mind in terms of, you know, thinking of it this way, because I always thought, you know, I like humor. And I always feel like I associate gifts with humor. That's kind of, um, yeah, info, decor, yeah, to my lessons. Absolutely, Jenny, that's exactly kind of how I've always placed gifts. So in this case, I want you to think differently in the sense of like, can you take a concept that you normally teach in class or a strategy, for example. Um, in this case, when you look at the, the, the instructions, it says think about a concept or a process in the subject that you teach or that you're most interested in. And how could you demonstrate that same concept using a GIF? And uh, you have to remember that it's rapid repetition, <laughs> you know, uh, you can make GIFs that are kind of multiple images long. So I'll, I'll see if I can, I'm going to divert from the slides for a second. And this is the, the GIF uh, or Giphy. I apologize because it's kind of a, an assault on our eyes here. I'm going to, um, should be able to see my own GIFs if I log in here. Uh, there we go. This is what I was looking for. So this is one that I created. I'll, I'll open it here. And I can't pause it at the moment, but it's going to run through a series of images. Uh, I specifically have taught in the past uh, a lot of writing courses. And you can't, you can say a, a little bit, but one of the things that I did was um, the text stays the same throughout all the images. So what I said here is a start early, writing is a process. So one of the concepts that I teach in, in one of my comm courses was that, you know, it's a process. You start with um, brainstorming. This would be sort of your brainstorming. This would be your uh, um, uh, creating, a, there's things like brainstorming, organizing, creating a rough draft, uh, doing a final edit. And so these images, are trying to walk you through those steps. And so it would be some kind of a reminder of what it's like. And then in the bottom, I put this little sticker that said behind the scenes, you know, this indication that writing doesn't happen overnight. You know, most, most of us that have done an undergrad or all of us that have done an undergrad know that, you know, there's probably maybe one or two nights where you didn't sleep and you, 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 you know, put out, delivered a paper overnight. And that, that doesn't always work for you in the long run, that you have to walk through a bit of a process. So this is how I 
work through a, a Giphy or an, a concept. Um, and when you do create a Giphy, it's pretty simple. Uh, you can click on the create button and you can choose um, uh, files and whatnot to, to start. And it would open up and you start building your images. So we could do an example here if people want. Um, and uh, maybe what I would do is pick on someone um, to maybe speak up and pick out a topic or a, or a, a concept that they might want to change into a GIF. And I'm going to open the floor. And we can, we can build one together really uh, quickly here. Time management, perfect. OK, so before I choose um, uh, images, I need to have those images on my computer. What I'm going to do is I'm going to just open up a new tab. And I like to use Unsplash. I'm going to throw this link. I'm going to throw Unsplash into the chat. Unsplash is a great source of uh, openly licensed images. So in this case, you, you know, it's always good to try and cite them, um, these ones, but you don't have to. Uh, and so that's why I'm using Unsplash for this. Uh, search words for uh, time management. Um, we could keep it simple, and we could look at time. Right, so you get a series of clocks. Um, I'm just going to pick this one. I'm going to click on the download button. Management. Okay, I love the uh, sticky note agendas. I'm going to download this one as well because it's uh, uh, pretty good. Any other search words you want to put into this to add any pictures that you think are maybe a skill set or some other um, uh, that has to do with time management? Because you can add to the narrative. And I think that's what I would recommend thinking about. Uh, yeah, OK, clock face. So we, we do have a clock. Let me see if I can do clock face. Calendar, yes. Uh, I can just pick, I'll pick this one because it seems a bit more student oriented here with the, the book. All right, so I'm not going to spend a lot of time on it because I want to move through it. I would download those images first. I would go into Giphy. Uh, I'll uh, copy this link and put it into the chat too. So if you're interested in following along and, and creating your own, you could do that. I choose the file. In this case, it's going to be in my downloads. Um, I'm going to do one at a time. I'm going to start with the clock face. I'll do open. And we're, we're crossing our fingers that it, it does work. OK, cool. So it's in there. Now I'm going to add more images. And here I have to browse my files. And I'm going to cancel this for a second. See here it says three seconds. So we don't, we don't want it to stay on three seconds per, per image. I think we're going to just going to do one second per image. Browse files. And the next we'll do is I'll just do things in order. Um, so do the calendar. Next, one second. So it defaults to one second again, which is great. I'm going to browse again. And we'll pick this one here, which is another kind of organization. And then we'll add one more, last one. Or last, yes, I believe this is the last one. And then I click Continue to Decorate down at the bottom. And then enter a caption. 
anyone want to give me a caption? Time management is one thing, but you know, gifts or you know, have a little bit of creative flair to it. Is there anything that you can come up with that might work that might attract your students to, to looking at this and, and reflecting on the concept you're trying to get across? I know I'm putting everybody on the spot. Perfect. Alyssa, Alyssa, is, Alyssa is helping me out. Plan ahead. Sorry, sorry, well, sorry. That's awesome. Back. Yeah. Well, there we go. So you can add stickers, you can add filters, you can draw on it. I'm going to keep it pretty simple. We've added a few images. We've put a tagline in. You can refer students to this. And maybe it's maybe you do a little write-up around it. Maybe you put in uh, an audio caption for it, like within your LMS. Um, you can be creative with how you use that. And uh, <laughs> if, you, if you really want to, I think it will be, uh, let me see here, enter a source URL. Um, I think we can just say uh, time management. Or the, one, the one thing to keep in mind as well as, as, as we go through the um, these activities is that the experimenter um, is, is a good rabbit hole um, module to to uh, to work with. So time management is actually kind of funny that that you picked that topic um, because when you're working on completing the modules, you do really need to manage your time and make sure that um, that you're aware of of what time it is. Um, I can tell you from personal experience that. Um, there are dozens of rabbit holes in the Ontario Extend program, which is not a bad thing. Um, it's a really great thing um, because there's lots of information and there's a lot of different paths you can take and explore. And it's really great, um, but you just have to keep an eye on the clock. <laughs> okay, cool. So next uh, you can embed it. So if your LMS, your learning management system, whether it's Blackboard, um, uh, D2L, whatever system that you're in, usually you can embed these directly into that. Um, you can also do a quick share. So whether it's uh, copying the link and I'll just post it into the chat and then you should have access to that GIF. Let me know if you don't, because um, then I would have to change my, uh, my share preferences but it should be set to public. And you now you'll be able to take a look at it. And same with your students, they can go through and, and take a look at it. And like I said, tying it into some kind of a concept, uh, a narrative for them is much more, I think, sometimes productive if you're trying to experiment using a technology in a different way. Okay, perfect. Thanks, Trisha, for letting me know that it worked. Yeah, good, good question, Susan. Yeah, thanks, Naomi. Um, yeah, um, yeah, yeah, I'll let Alyssa answer to, the module was, question. Sorry about that. Um, okay. Do we have to access, do we have access to most? Um, oh yes, absolutely. Um, so the the materials are available on the website, um, the extend, uh, dot, um, there we go. Thank you, Rich. You are a savior. Um, so all of the module content is available on the website 24 seven. So you can get at it whenever and wherever. So you can always go back to something. Um, if you're just trying to get through the modules and complete the tasks and, and you'd like to come back to something later, you can absolutely do that. Yeah. So here on my screen, um, I just went to the link that uh, Rich sent in. Uh, the neat thing about the Ontario Extend project is that we have enabled it to go into a, uh, they've built it into a, uh, uh, an LMS. So it's in a D2L, a Brightspace uh, account area. And so it's just a little bit more contained and it gives you a bit more of a, a community feeling to it. Uh, and this is what Rich, uh, Rich has put into the chat where you can register. Registering doesn't mean that you have to complete any of them. It just gives you the option to complete it within the Brightspace um, account area. And so 
don't feel pressure to, to have to complete things on time or attend any synchronous sessions, but it's all there. And it, it's all a great opportunity to kind of connect and, and, and move through it. Yeah, so Rich just put in a great comment there that you can you can read in the chat. So we'll have to skip the uh, the infographic information, but that is a long, in long and short uh, <laughs> overview of of uh, yeah of, of our uh, experimenter module. Yeah, no, that's great. Um, so, um, sure what we a question there? Oh, she she does. Yeah, can we register for a specific cohort? Um, yes. So um, when you go up to the registration link, um, it will take you to a place where you can input your information and you'll receive the, the details there. Um, when you're registered and entered into the, uh, the system, you'll be able to access the, the different courses through um, the D2L management, uh, learning management system. Um, and that kind of is a really nice segue into, into this slide um, that we are um, hosting some upcoming sessions. Um, so we are running a similar one tomorrow uh, during the same time period um, around the curator module. So we'll be digging into some open educational resource material tomorrow. Um, one of the really cool things with Ontario Extend is um, what, what's happening right now is that we're running uh, different facilitated sessions to, to build community, like Bert said. Um, we're hosting um, a series of all six modules. Uh, we're going to host them within a two-week time period. Now, again, there's no pressure to complete them within that two weeks, but we do have, you know, um, different tasks for you to work through. And we host synchronous sessions on Monday night of the first week, Monday night of the second week, and the Friday of that second week. Um, so we have three different check-in points um, to, uh, to have facilitated discussions and collaborate with each other. Um, and those are happening um, from 7 to 8 p.m. So every two weeks, there's a, a, new, a new module that's going to be started. Uh, Tuesdays, we have lunch and learns um, that are going to be very similar to what we did today. So we may pick different activities from within the modules for those. So if you're if you've um, followed along and completed a couple of these activities, you may be able to attend one later in the semester and, and complete a couple more. So you just kind of chip away at it. Um, we also host uh, drop in sessions. So we have somebody online on Wednesday evenings from seven to eight and uh, you can drop in and chat ask questions, uh, work through some of the modules together if you'd like. Um, and then we also have the Saturday extenders. Um, and this semester we've chunked the Saturday into two components. So we we're offering one module compressed or condensed. Um, we're offering some, some work around that from nine to 12 in the morning. And then in the afternoon from one to 4 p.m. We'll, we'll look at a different module. So you can come to one or you can come to the other or you can come to both if you have a Saturday available. Um, so that is what we are doing this fall and that's what we're up to. So we really hope that you um, use that uh, registration link and, and join in to some of our sessions. And then I would just say, if anyone has any questions, you're welcome to, uh, to, to, to chime in. Um, but yes, uh, just gonna echo what Alyssa said, the sessions are there and thanks for everyone for, for coming. If you have any questions too, we can also be reached once you're, once you're in your uh, Brightspace account, uh, like once you, if you were to register, then you can email us through these uh, 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 email addresses. So that um, that wraps us up for today, and that brings us pretty much right to the to the timeline. So um, we hope that you were able to um, follow along and and get some of those activities uh, ready for submission and and work towards your badges. Yeah, Susan had a question there just about oh, uh, so length sorry. of time. Yeah, no, it's okay about length oh. of time in terms of completing. Um, it's there's no solid set of time. Realistically, you have like a full semester until till January to complete any one of the modules. And then even, you know, if you did complete not all of them, if if our, our bright space uh, area, you know, is not um, 
it's hard to explain, but uh, you can always still use the website to, to access the material and to submit things. So really, there is no uh, dead set timeline. It's 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 that flexible um, that you can you can go in and and uh, chip away. Thanks, Ivan, and Thank thanks, so uh, Patricia. For Thank you. Yeah. Bye-bye.